Welcome to our lecture online. Now here we have an interesting challenge. We're trying to find the buoyancy force on a cube inside a tube filled with a fluid that has density, well, rho, and the tube rotates around a vertical axis at an angle of velocity of omega. Notice the cube dimensions are L by L by L, which is the volume of the cube. And so what we need to consider is the force on the right side of the face and the force on the left side of the face. So from that, we should be able to find the buoyancy force. It seems to make sense that the force on the right will be greater than the force on the left because the pressure on the right is greater than the pressure on the left. And notice that the pressure is a function of radius from the point of rotation, from the axis of rotation, is one half times the density times omega squared times r squared. And that's an equation that we derived in a previous video. So we're going to use that to find the buoyancy force on that cube. Now, typically speaking, we remember on the vertical axis, the buoyancy force is equal to the weight of the displaced liquid, which ends up being the density times the volume times g. But that is in the vertical direction. It then makes sense that in the horizontal direction, we would think that the buoyancy force is equal to rho times v times the centripetal acceleration. And that is indeed correct. However, g is a constant, centripetal acceleration is actually a function of r. So that's why we have to take into account that we need to first find the pressure, which was found by using an integral, because we know that the centripetal acceleration was not a constant. And from that, we then will find the buoyancy force. So the challenge is to find the buoyancy force on that particular cube. So what we can say is that the buoyancy force is going to be equal to the force on the right minus the force on the left. It'll be the difference between the two forces, the force pushing on the right, the force pushing left. Notice that the pressure is greater here, the pressure is less here, so that we have a buoyancy force pushing the cube towards the left. Now the force on the right can be found as follows. The force on the right, that would be the buoyancy force, uh, or no, I'll, I won't call it the buoyancy force, I'll call it the force. The force on the right is equal to the pressure on the right times, or let me see, I'll start with the, on the left, that makes it easier. Let's do it this way. The force on the left will be equal to the pressure on the left times the cross-sectional area of the cube. So pressure times area is the force, because pressure is force over area. And then the pressure on the left, that's going to be equal to this. That's going to be one half the density times omega squared times r squared, that's the pressure on the left, times the cross-sectional area, which will be L squared. And so that will be the force on the left. Now the force on the right will be on this side of the cube, so the distance from now will be r plus L. So instead of r squared, we'll have r plus L squared. So the force on the right is equal to the pressure on the right times the cross-sectional area. So that will be one-half times the density, omega squared times r plus l quantity squared times l squared. Now let's expand that and see what we get. So let's come up here and we'll say that the force on the right is therefore equal to one half times the density times omega squared times, so when we expand that we'll get r squared plus 2rl plus L squared, and then we'll still multiply that times L squared. And that's kind of interesting. So now, to find the buoyancy force, we have to subtract the two from one another. <clears throat> so the buoyancy force, which is equal to the force on the right minus the force on the left, so we'll put this in there. So we have one half, we're going to multiply everything through. So density, omega squared, R squared, L squared, plus one-half times two, that cancels out. So we have plus density omega squared uh, times r times l times l squared, that will be l cubed. And finally, plus one-half density omega squared l squared times l squared, which is l to the fourth. So that is here the force on the right. Now we subtract from that the force on the left, so minus the force on the left which is going to be one-half density 
omega squared, r squared, l squared. Now notice, luckily, the first term and the last term are identical, except this is negative, this is positive, so they will cancel out, which leaves us with the buoyancy force is equal to the remaining two terms. So density omega squared r l cubed plus one half density omega squared l to the fourth. Now we're going to play a few mathematical tricks to get a feel for it. First of all, this here is the volume. L cubed is the volume. And omega squared times r is a centripetal acceleration. Remember that the centripetal acceleration is equal to v squared over r, which is equal to r squared omega squared over r, which is equal to r times omega squared. So knowing this, we can see that this portion of that first term, that's actually a centripetal acceleration, but it's a function of r, and this is the volume. So we can say that the buoyancy force is equal to the density times the volume times the centripetal acceleration, which is indeed a function of r. And notice that this is very similar to what we have over here. It's a density times volume times the acceleration, g. Here, density times volume times acceleration, except acceleration of the constant is a function of r. Now, if we take a look at this right here, that would be plus one half times the density times omega squared. L cubed is the volume, which leaves us one L like this. So notice that we have this term plus the additional term here. And the reason for that is that there's not a, a linear relationship between R and pressure. The pressure increases as R squared, so the buoyancy force at this point will not be the same as the buoyancy force at any other point. It will be a function of R because the first term, and it will be dependent upon not only the volume of the object, but the length of the object as well, the distance from here to here. So there's actually two terms that give you the, um, the uh, buoyancy force. So either way is a good way to express the buoyancy force. We can express it like this, or we can express it like this. And you can see that it's a very different matter to find the buoyancy force uh, in the vertical direction versus the horizontal direction if the object is spinning around at angular velocity omega. And that is how that's done.